Hello dear subscribers. Today's post is about currency strength, an advantage that you only get in the foreign exchange or forex market but not in the futures market. We look at the individual effects and whether you can use this information to increase your probability of winning. We also compare paid currency meters with free currency meters, the result will surprise you. With the right approach, by the end of my post you will be able to immediately identify the strength of 28 different currency pairs. You will of course get the appropriate tools from me. In my youth there was a comic magazine, YPS, that always included a gimmick. For example a machine that produces square eggs. First an egg was boiled, then enclosed in the plastic box and placed in the refrigerator. At breakfast our parents were amazed that there are actually square eggs. Why am I telling this? Well, here you are, a dashboard developed by me that gives me different views in the area of currency strength. You can create this dashboard yourself with a few clicks of the mouse, the indicators and the corresponding template can be found in this post. I also wanted to provide you with a kind of YPS booklet so that you can put my information into practice immediately afterwards. Viewed collectively, retailers always trade against the trend, tend to expand losing positions and go mostly in a big loss with their entries. The big players are usually always in a better situation. You have sufficient capital to take on a variety of independent, simultaneous positions with different entry levels. Diversification and the law of large numbers are used to minimize risks and smooth profits. Incidentally, casinos also use these factors by providing several gaming tables at the same time. On this chart, the white line represents the volume of long retail positions in Eurist at the close of each M15 candle. What is interesting is how this value goes down as the price goes up. In contrast, when the price falls, the retailer volume of long positions increases. The bigger candles are caused by the stops of the retailers and not by a massive number of market orders added by the big players. In USDCHF, the volume of long positions in retail is falling while the big players take the opposite side. It should be clear who sits on the longer lever. We see that the retailers are on the wrong side almost at all times, which also explains the high loss rates in the retail sector. For this interesting presentation, by the way, many thanks to Hanover, a very creative and professional programmer of the largest trading platform Forex Factory. I will come back to him later. There are a number of different representations of the currency strength meter. In today's post we will also look at whether currency strength indicators that cost money are superior to free ones. The typical strength indicators give an idea of how much a currency has moved compared to all other currencies against which it is compared. Of course you can use it to see if the dollar is strong in relation to other currencies. You can use a currency strength meter to identify a strong currency and a weak currency. Many traders take advantage of this information and trade the strongest against the weakest currency. We'll take a closer look at whether this is actually a smart idea. Today's comparison is about 8 currency strengths from which a total of 28 currency pairs are formed. Let's first look at how high a currency's share of the total turnover of the Forex market is. The NZD reached a share of 2.1%. The CAD reached 4.9%. The CHF already passed the 5% hurdle, the AUD reached 6.8%, while the pound reached 12.8%. The first three places are occupied by the yen with 16.8%. In second place is the euro with a share of over 32% and first place is the dollar with over 88%. Here we can now see how the dollar is calculated in five different time units against the seven other currencies. Let us now compare the eight different currencies to one another. Red shows weakness while green highlights strength. In this graph, the dollar is the weakest and the New Zealand dollar is the strongest. Now you can sort the different currencies in different time units according to their strength, with the strongest currency at the top and the weakest currency at the bottom. This results in the 28 different currency pairs that we can also sort in the 5 different time units according to their strength. Overall, this currency strength knife is very detailed if you want to have an overview of all 28 currency pairs. Since I personally only work with the euro, the US dollar, of course, only the euro and dollar are relevant to me. 
From this I filtered my own currency strength meter only for the euro and dollar. The individual columns show the respective time units. In the upper area we see the dollar strength and in the lower area the euro strength. To the right of it I have once installed an M1 chart to show you exactly how this display works. The left column, where the currency strength is calculated in the M1, of course reacts much faster than in the last column, where the monthly observation takes place. Therefore, pay close attention to the first three columns. First of all, we can see that the dollar strength is in the foreground. And now pay attention to how the dollar is getting weaker and the strength of the euro is increasing. Initially, the euro and the dollar are in equilibrium, and it seems as if the dollar wants to push the rate down again. Now we can see how the euro is getting stronger and stronger, the reaction, the price is being pushed up very quickly. Once again there is a balance between the euro and the dollar, which the euro ultimately decides for itself. Although the price is now fluctuating back and forth, we can see the clear euro dominance, which would still allow an entry to the top in this situation. A slightly different view consists of two different lines running in a 100% value. The red line shows us the strength of the dollar while the green line shows the strength of the euro. In this case, the dollar strength is around 62% and the euro strength is around 30%. First we draw a center line at 50%. We can thus see that the respective currency is strong above the middle line and as soon as it moves below the middle line, it tends to show a weak trend. Let's look at an example of this. Above are the candles below is our strength indicator. At the beginning the course runs down a bit. In the area of the strength indicator, we can clearly see the dominance in the dollar. Now the course is going up, here the euro strength is clearly in the foreground. There is a brief pullback, but we can already see that the dollar is weakening. The course is now continuing upwards, with the strength of the euro in the foreground here too. Then there is a downward movement, the dollar has a clear advantage. The exchange rate is going up again, interestingly, the dollar rises at the same time as the euro, with the euro still having a slight advantage. Now the price is going down again and we can see the clear dominance of the dollar. When a bullish candle arises, there are theoretically three starting situations. The strength of the euro remains unchanged while the dollar is weakening. The euro strength increases while the dollar strength remains the same. The euro strength increases while the dollar strength decreases. Of course, these three initial situations also apply to a bearish candle. While the dollar strength remains the same, the euro strength decreases. The dollar strength increases while the euro strength remains the same and the dollar strength increases while the euro strength decreases at the same time. This situation would accelerate the downward movement more. Let's look at another example in an 8-tick chart in Eurist. On the left is the dollar strength, on the right we see the euro strength. The strength in M1 is in the middle and the time units increase outwards. Now pay attention to the two inner areas, as this is where the quickest reaction can be determined. In the middle we see the strength of the euro and the strength of the dollar in the form of two lines. Below that I have once again drawn the dollar strength individually within the 8 tick chart. If the yellow line is above the center line, the dollar is strong, if the yellow line is below the center line, the dollar is weak. Let us now observe a live price. The strength of the dollar has a clear advantage, as we can see in both the top and the bottom diagram. The price is therefore going down. In the lower area there is initially a small equilibrium, we can see that the dollar is still very strong. The euro is gradually getting stronger and the rate is rising. In this case, the tick chart display actually shows significantly better results than the upper display in the M1. We can see that the strength of the euro continues to have a clear advantage, which also explains that the price continues to rise more strongly. Suddenly there is a small breakout downwards, in the tick chart we can see that the strength indicator only reacts at this moment. The dollar strength in the M1 is increasing and the rate is falling again. Based on this example, we can see that the strength of the currency is also lagging behind the price. And that is also logical, because after all, all currency strength indicators in the forex market are calculated from the price, and not from the volume, as the volume in the forex market is not completely available to us. 
Incidentally, the calculation of the currency strength within the tick chart is not entirely correct. This is simply because the other counter currencies would theoretically have to be calculated simultaneously within an 8 tick chart in order to arrive at a correct calculation. The correlation between retail volume and currency strength is very accurate. This means that the retail volume can theoretically be used as a leading indicator just like the currency strength itself. It is also important to know that it is not the indicator that is the decisive factor in trading, but rather how the respective trader interprets the data taken from it. Now let's take another look at our currency strengths on the left. We find that of the eight currencies, the dollar is the weakest while the New Zealand dollar is the strongest. If we look at Thin's dust during this period, we actually see a stronger rise to the upside. But I generally warn against trading the weakest currency against the strongest. The background is that at the time of entering the market you can of course never know whether the current currency correlation will continue to exist. We see that the dollar is getting weaker and the euro is getting stronger so we decide to buy the euro. The decision was right and we are getting out of the euro. The euro continues to get weaker and the dollar stronger, we now decide to buy the dollar. This decision was also the right one and we are getting out of the dollar. The euro is getting stronger the dollar is getting weaker we decide to buy the euro. A short time later we realize that this decision was not the best. From my point of view there are some possibilities for improvement in the area of currency strength, for example in the representation of how much a currency changes within a certain period of time. However, the correct way of looking at currency strength brings additional benefits that a trader can use to their advantage. I myself use different currency strengths in my charts, which often help me. However, I admit that I only keep an eye on the strength of the currency every now and then. I would never use the currency strength individually to get a market entry. However, it often helps me to stay in the market a little longer in order to make a little more profit. Now we come to my promised dashboard with different currency strengths and additional interesting tools that you can download. First you have to go to my blog at Forex Factory, I link the page in my descriptions on YouTube. This is about the post with the number 1472 on my blog. If you scroll down I will roughly explain the structure of my screens again and then we will come to my dashboard. In this post you will find all the explanations about this dashboard and the indicators, as well as a few auxiliary indicators for stop hunting. In addition to clear installation instructions, you will finally find the indicators including a template to download at the end. But please read through the text or have it translated into German. In the zip file you will find different currency strength indicators, with which you are able to calculate individual currency strengths. So you can easily determine the respective currency strength in all 28 different currency pairs. If you need help or what advantages Forex Factory has to offer, check out my video on the topic, Finding Similar Traders. There you will discover other interesting clues that will help you advance in future trading. By the way, when you are at Forex Factory, please pay attention to the members shown in the chart. Hanover, Faroe FX, GBC, Arabus, Raytheon, Honsnave, Fiat Fab, Kangun, there are also many other creative programmers, they have programmed incredibly good and professional currency strength indicators that are just as good or even significantly better than all currency strength indicators that you can buy. The paid currency strength indicators are inferior in all areas to the free indicators that you can find on Forex Factory. Believe me, the best MT4 programmers can be found at Forex Factory. By the way, at Forex Factory there are almost 1 million members in the stocks, Forex and future sectors. At this point I would like to thank all active members of Forex Factory once again, who help many traders every day with their great work. Let's draw a conclusion. Today I was only able to roughly show you the advantages of currency strength. We know the strength of the currencies is calculated from the price and ultimately the accuracy of the data depends primarily on your broker. Basically, all indicators give a retrospective view of what the price has caused and therefore have no more predictive value than the price itself. In addition, the predictive value depends on the strength of sentiment, which is determined by a number of different reasons. A price-based currency strength indicator is of course not able to take fundamental factors into account. In principle it is a very interesting tool that every trader can interpret individually. 
and it is precisely this interpretation that always determines success or failure. By the way, almost a year ago, I posted my first video at YouTube, so we'll be talking about the future of trading next week. I wish you continued success in trading and look forward to seeing you again next week. Kind regards Michael. <laughs>